estuaries of Puget Sound are among our favorite places to explore. Here are some of our surprising discoveries. Today, on Journal of Accessible Sciences, We'll explore the boundary between the shallow marine environment and a typical deciduous forest. Of course, each of these habitats have their own collection of plants and animals. This little stream flows across a small meadow, then directly into the sea. These little, shy fish can be seen swimming about in small groups. They quickly hide in the algae try to get too close. We'll come back a bit later today, better prepared. So having seen the minnows in the stream down there, we will make a little bit of a trap so that we can take a closer look at them. We'll begin by taking two of these plastic containers that typically soft drinks come in, some tape, and a pair of scissors. On the first container, we'll just cut the bottom off. And the second one, we're gonna separate up near the top. And then we're gonna assemble it by taking the two of them and putting them together like this. And fish aren't known for being particularly smart, so once they get in this area here, they won't be able to find their way out. And then we'll take some of this tape, and we'll tape these two sections together. So there we have it. Completed trap, low cost material. They swim in, they get in the large chamber, and they get caught. So the next thing that remains to be done is to tape a weight of some kind to this. And presto, we've made a handy dandy little minnow trap. And now we'll take it back down to the stream and see what we can catch. Okay, now we'll wait an hour or two. It seems we've caught quite a few. How wonderful to have discovered sticklebacks in our little stream. We've known that sticklebacks are very common and widely distributed, but it is always nice to have a personal acquaintance with some. The next thing we'll do is we'll put them into this little plastic container, especially for the purpose. Our little friends are a favorite with evolutionary biologists. Their ability to live in both sea and freshwater environments allows them to radiate into a very broad range of habitats. They are found with great species variation in all temperate regions of Asia, Europe, and North America. The most conspicuous features are the dorsal and pectoral spines and the absence of scales. Sticklebacks are closely related to seahorses. We'll release them back into the stream where they came from.
Now we'll leave this shoreline and the stream of our sticklebacks and go to a very different sort of marsh area, just a few miles away. Today we find ourselves in a very narrow habitat, an estuary, sometimes called a salt marsh. The plants and animals here have adapted to survive, even thrive, in a mixture of fresh water, salt water, and sometimes no water at all. Along the margins of the salt marsh, that is to say along the thin strip of land that is most often above the tide level, there are a few species of plants that are able to withstand an occasional submersion. Probably the most conspicuous of these plants living on the edge are the Puget Sound gumweed. Gumweed probably gets its common name from the white gummy substance on its flower buds. It is evidently an effective deterrent. There is very little evidence of insect damage to these plants. Puget Sound gumweed plays an important role in this constricted habitat. A small collection of insect species flourish on the abundance of their blossoms. This small leafcutter bee, with leg pouches nearly full of pollen, hurries to gather more. The pollen will be food for their offspring. Hoverflies do their best to look like bees but have a different sense of urgency about siphoning nectar from the blossoms. Sometimes everyone wants to be on the same real estate. A longhorn bee follows a relatively large leaf cutter. You may notice it has no leg pouches, but its body hairs are covered with pollen. Larger cuckoo bees look a lot like wasps. They don't need to collect pollen. They lay their eggs in the nests of bees that do. Little delta wing butterflies, known as skippers, are another regular visitor to Puget Sound gumweed. A caterpillar of the owlet moth feeds on the center of gumweed blossoms, having found a way to defeat the plant's natural defenses. Gumweed is a critical resource in the biological ecosystem of Puget Sound estuaries. Here, briefly, are a couple others. Pickleweed grows only where it is regularly covered at high tide. Not necessarily every day, but most of the time. Their flowers are very much reduced to little yellow nubs. And these brass button plants grow in the same tidal zone as the pickleweed. Their flowers, too, are minimal and don't mind submersion at all, as we can see. There are many mysterious residents of these estuaries. Today we've seen a few. Thank you for watching another episode Journal of Accessible Sciences.